Hi. Uh, my name is Andrea Ribin. I, I took the first place in the XTX Markets Global Forecasting Challenge. Uh, I hold a bachelor's degree in economics from Moscow State University and bachelor's degree in or a master's degree in economics from New Economic School. And uh, I am working in the trading industry for about seven years, uh, making statistical arbitrages and high frequency trading. XTX Markets is a leading uh, quantitative driven electronic market maker, provider, uh, providing liquidity, um, helping market participants throughout the world uh, obtain competitive uh, prices. And uh, I would like to tell some words about the challenge. Uh, it uh, lasted for about three months and uh, I started participating in September. And the goal of the challenge is to write some Python or R script uh, to predict the target on event by event basis. So um, you get some uh, event, some row of the data, and you emit uh, some one value of the target, of the predicted target. And uh, as for prices, it was about uh, more than 100,000 US dollars and uh, 100,000 US dollars to top five performers. And uh, there was interesting that uh, XTX uh, launched their own benchmark code, uh, which performance uh, was shown on the public leaderboard. And uh, if you beat this benchmark, uh, you are likely, you will get uh, the price. And there was a price to the top performer under 25 years. And uh, there are like, a lot of job opportunities for the guys who sent a good CV and uh, passed tests. Uh, and the correlation one company was uh, helping organizing this. As for data, uh, data was uh, one CSV file uh, with about 3 million rows and uh, 61 columns. Uh, 60 columns refers to limit order book. Uh, do you know what is it? Do, has anybody? <laughs> Has anybody experienced trading? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> fellow traders, hi. Uh, and um, I provide some illustration of this event, of these 60 columns. Uh, let's focus on this great large red bar. Um, uh, the color of this bar refers to the ask side. Ask uh, means uh, that uh, the guys are willing to sell something. And uh, mm, here, they are willing to sell on 1,622 rate, so this price. And uh, on the right, y-axis, uh, there is a column name referring in the data. So it's like ask, rate four. Ask rate four refers to this price. And uh, these guys willing to sell on this rate uh, have some size, some how many units they are willing to sell. And uh, on the x axis, there are about one, more than 150 units of something they are willing to sell. And uh, there are 15 levels of bids and 15 levels of asks, um, and the two sides, bid, ask, uh, two fields, price or rate and uh, size, and uh, the sum up to 60 uh, columns of uh, this data set. And, uh, and there was a one target, which is not explicitly specified, uh, which uh, like you have to guess. And uh, it was uh, like, it was a clipped version of some um, price return. Uh, we, it, it was uh, like a mid rate of uh, first levels. When you see this top uh, bars, top red bar, top uh, blue bar, and you take these rates, 
at the mid of these rates, and you shift forward by 87 ticks, and took the difference, you get the target and clip it. You get the target. So it was uh, like you predict uh, price, uh, price return of something, you know, like trying to beat the market and so forth. Uh, and as for scoring, uh, it was uh, residual sum of squares divided by sum of squares of target. Uh, it uh, refers to the like R squared, uh, but uh, with uh, mean of the target uh, equal to zero. And uh, today, to get this score, you have to update some Python or R code. Uh, there are two methods for Python, like get next di data to get this limit order book event. And uh, you have to write some code to submit this prediction, how to you act on this event. You upload to the server, the uh, will load three working pe mm, submissions, successful submissions per day, and wait up to 15 hours for scoring. So if you have like deep model with many parameters, it will take, and it will take 20 hours for scoring, your solution will be terminated and uh, you have to upload again a smaller model. Uh, and uh, after you upload the model, it, it was uh, past all the time deadlines, you, uh, your solution, mm, performance, the performance of your solution was published on the public leaderboard and autom automatically uh, it was anonymous with no user ID and uh, you have, uh, and you can compare your model against the top performing model of these guys. And as for validation scheme, it was very simple. Uh, it's like a time series of sequence data and uh, I made one split. Uh, there was, I split the data set in two halves. On the first half, I trained my first level models and make some uh, feature engineering uh, to avoid any leakage from the end of the data set. On the second part, I also divided in two parts to, uh, to find uh, the, blending, the better blending model. Mm. And uh, there was a, a part in the end of the data set for my local cross validation. Uh, frankly speaking, the test uh, data set of blending uh, also was a good approximation of local score and uh, they uh, are highly correlated with the public, data, that public score. Uh, so I focus on the, on the last week, I do, didn't update, upload any models uh, because it was, um, mm. I was on the, sec um, for a long time I was on the first place and uh, b two weeks before the end of the challenge there was a guy who uploaded the model and was uh, on the second place and I don't want to rush and focus on my local cross validation to avoid any leaking information about my models and uh, I uploaded in the like last day my model and uh, which hugely improved my public score and uh, on the solution. It, it's interesting uh, that I used uh, this gap between train and test sets uh, because um, uh, the first points of the any test set will have a similar, uh, are similar to the end of the train, uh, training set. So if my features are lagging, like, like uh, using moving average of something or over rolling window, they're highly correlated with the uh, end of the train set and I use this gap between splits uh, to uh, avoid this leakage of the information. Uh, frankly speaking, my solution is uh, very simple. You just generate many features like gradient boosting and uh, I use uh, one ensemble model to combine all the predictions. Uh, I chose uh, Elastic Net as a blending model to fine tune the parameters to um, avoid uh, high complexity models in the, uh, to, uh, to upload because it was um, uh, costly to create the models on the server. If you remember, there are 15 hours for calculation. Uh, so I just tuned my model to get a more parsimonious one. And uh, the, all the first level models uh, results were highly correlated. The correlation between predicted targets on the first level was about, um, was more than 95%. And uh, uh, I use this uh, positive coefficient constraint of the elastic net to 
to push, to avoid these negatives of the coefficients of the linear model. Um, as for features, uh, I will not discuss any secret features here. Uh, it's just like a trading intuition uh, for my background, from my background, or in just simply using combinations of uh, market microstructure signals, like uh, bit size, difference of bit sizes, uh, scale difference of bit sizes, and I applied some time aggregations, like me moving average over the last n updates and plus 10 updates and so forth. Uh, as for market data, it is uh, 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 limit order book data was only provided in this challenge, but in the real trading settings, there are also trades. Like if you buy or sell, the trades is published. And a uh, good idea is to extract this trades information from the public or from this limit order book data set. And I was, it was done manually. I was extracting some trade features, flow features, uh, it's like uh, disappearing, disappearing uh, orders, sizes from the top of the book. And I parameterized everything as some numbers of levels, and numbers of windows, of lookback windows, and uh, generate many features. Uh, so models, it's, uh, I was using Hyperopt to fine tune my YGBM models. YGBM were fast, and I was uh, using only CPUs in this core of the challenge. And uh, uh, the most uh, interesting thing, the thing the, which uh, boosted my results, it was using prediction not only for the main target, which I used, or which was uh, stated in the challenge, but I constructed my own targets uh, using not this 87 ticks window when, when, um, when, the, when you shift your prices to construct the target, but using less number of ticks to construct the targets. Like uh, we have 87 horizon to predict. It's like huge variance. We can shrink the horizon to predict. And uh, uh, the, mm, this smaller window of uh, horizon of prediction uh, uh, provides better signal to noise ratios. And I was just simply pro, uh, predict many targets and use the average of these predictions uh, to get the final IGBM model. And I used uh, my, uh, and I splitted my features that I set in many parts and use overlapping parts uh, to provide uh, some mm. diversity to the IGBM models. And uh, as for the top parameters, uh, the boosting time was uh, chosen to be a dart uh, instead of boosting tree. And uh, as for main regularization I used, it was like uh, mean child samples to avoid this overfitting. So that's it. And you make many features like gradient boosting, use blending, and win. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any uh, questions. Yes, yeah. of course. And we have one question that comes from the live stream chart. So it is, uh, how big was the gap between train and test data? Mm. <laughs> it was about uh, 1,000. Uh, from 1,000 to 10,000 observations depended on my features and uh, like that. OK, great, thanks. Uh, so do you have any questions? Uh, можно задавать по-русски или по-английски, кому как удобнее. Okay, great. So I would like to remind that um, those who watch the live stream may ask questions online. And let's thank Andre. Thank you. Thank you.